Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we're going to have just a little chat about the Gaming's Workshop annual report that came out. And the the easy way to put it, um, I'll put it in a in the description down below so you can read it for yourselves. But the easiest, simplest way to put it is, Games Workshop are doing pretty well. They're they're not having a bad time of it right now. They have had a very good, well, they've had a very good couple of years at this point. Um, everything is on the up. They are making more than they have for God knows how long. They've like doubled in some areas. The time of Games Workshop kind of either making a loss or just kind of limping along in a stagnant kind of plateau, those days seem to be well and truly over, which is obviously incredibly positive for us as, as people who buy from them, who invest in the hobbies that they produce. And... It's one of those things where overall, when I was looking through, I was like, this is brilliant, this is great, it shows they're doing everything right, they've quite clearly managed to get themselves out of that terrible point they were in whereby they were just alienating all the customers and you know, they, they weren't they weren't doing what Games Workshop needed to do to survive. They're not just surviving, they've actually gone a step further and made themselves successful again, which is genuinely gratifying and good to see, especially when you consider no, if if you enjoy the different hobbies, the different games that they produce, it's it, there's a kind of a weird human element to it. It's like, okay, that's awesome. All of these designers who work for them, all the people who make the rules, who sculpt the models, who do the you know the painting tutorials, who, which of course, the the chief being being two thin coats, Duncan, obviously. Um, the Warhammer community team who spend so much time and effort creating a actually pretty vast amount of content for us at this point, let's be honest. It's nice to see all of their work paying off and it being shown to be effective and working. When I actually went back and looked at uh, the Warhammer community site after having looked through the report, I don't think I'd really twigged just how much stuff Games Workshop has released over the past year. If you actually if you actually look at it properly, if you take a step back and really look at what they've they've done, they have been releasing stuff at especially if you compare it to, you know, years gone by, like a breakneck speed. We've had so much stuff. I mean, if you think about the the products that are currently supported at the moment, we've got We've got Blood Bowl, we've got Necromunda, we've got, well, we've got Kill Team now. Um, Adeptus Titanicus is coming up, we've got the Rogue Trader Kill Team, that's coming up. We had Shadow War Armageddon, there's Shade Spire, there's 40k, Age of Sigma, Lord of the Rings. I mean, there's going to be a new edition of Lord of the Rings, even new editions. We've had a new edition of 40k, we've had a new edition of Age of Sigma. We're now getting a new edition of the Lord of the Rings game. And alongside all of these releases, and all of the smaller releases contained therein, so different factions, different models, different codexes, different whatever the Age of Sigma equivalent of codexes are, I can't remember, is it a battle tome? It might be a battle tome, or it might just be a tome, I don't know. Um, I should know that, but that's really bad, never mind. On top of all of that, there's all the stuff that goes on around it, so like all of the articles on the Warhammer community site, and not just the articles for the things that are being released, but you know, all of the all of like the, the previews for the different factions, and then you've got stuff actually from the community itself, like examples of painted armies, painted kill teams. The sheer amount of work that is happening, the sheer amount of stuff that is being pushed out to consumers is kind of crazy it's kind of through the roof i can remember times years ago where you know you just wouldn't know what was going on and it would be because not really much was going on now it's the opposite now it's a case of okay what are we going to see next we've had these 18 different things in the last five weeks so what should we what are we going to see at this point obviously a lot of that contributes to how successful they've been you know this this rate of release and the way that they communicate these releases the way they interact with the customers now um, a lot of that will be significant in terms of how much it's helped growth and helped sales and all of that the only thing and 
this is the one kind of i'm not going to say negative because it, it shouldn't be classed as a negative when you don't know if whether it's going to happen or not which it probably won't the only negative is for me is that when i was reading through the report and i i read you know how much they were making and how successful they've been especially compared to earlier years um you know they had a point where they were just stagnating or making a loss that is that is bad to be where they are now in comparison to that is essentially a miraculous recovery um basically the current rate of release is really high the current rate of new products of supporting literature of articles of you know community stuff is really high the only thing that i'm concerned about when i was reading through it is that they will look at the speed over the quality and decide that the speed is the way to go that it's actually just how many things are being pushed out that is making the difference there are a lot of examples of companies a, a, a weird a weird kind of subset of say you know companies as a whole but a weird subset is restaurants that do incredibly well they do really really well they expand and then they find that they projected that they would keep rising the way that they've been rising and then they just sort of plateau and they don't actually get any better and they don't fill their expanded space there are plenty of companies in the past who you know have had a ridiculously good year and gone okay we can expand and then they've expanded and they haven't had a ridiculously good year again now i don't think games workshop is likely to do that i think they are smarter than that and they seem to be taking a more measured approach to what they're doing and like actively responding to how things are going to keep to keep things how they are to keep the growth where it is the only thing that concerns me is that there will be like an even bigger push in terms of releases having a brand new edition of 40k like every year that would be bad having like a brand new edition of age of sigma every year that would be bad if we started to see box sets of every single variety all of which are technically individual games for those who already play 40k want to get into 40k that's not bad bad but for those who want a supported product that kind of would be bad i'm hoping that if they did decide to speed up the releases beyond what they already have which is already pretty damn quick um they would you know they would actually bring on enough people to make sure that that happened now there's no reason to think they wouldn't um but i don't know it's the only thing where i was like oh there's like a potential negative there that it'd be very easy to look at that and go okay just push it harder push it harder push it harder push it harder there we go okay we should be great that might not work i don't think they're going to do that but that's my only concern because really it's just good like all of it is good the fact that doing this well is good the fact that they have achieved what they've achieved in the last couple of years um compared to where they were like three or four years ago is absolutely crazy and it clearly shows that they know what they're doing now they genuinely know what they're doing and they've got people working for them who are able to make it happen to such an extent that people keep buying it over and over again it's incredibly positive now there is one other thing that uh is interesting to me that i don't know if we'll ever actually see anything from it in there somewhere i can't remember which page i read it on um there's something about like the possibility of a film or tv show or something like that that's interesting to me because there is a there is a a huge amount of potential in warhammer 40,000 for that kind of thing but a lot of the things that i've seen from people are things like oh if they did make a tv show having like like an hbo sort of style show based around the horus heresy or you know based around lots of significant events in warhammer 40k would be amazing it would be amazing attempting to base a tv show around the horus heresy i that would be insanely expensive to the point that i don't even know if they'd ever be able to either provide or 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 pick up funding for something like that if we did see a warhammer 40,000 specifically 
um, film or TV show. It would more likely be a TV show, and it would more likely probably be like either a Netflix or Amazon Prime thing. I would have thought, um, as opposed to a traditional, you know, TV release. I would not be surprised if it wasn't focused on something far more close to home, far less. When I say far less 40k, I mean the main character is not a space marine. They are not fighting chaos space marines. They are not having to fend off a wave of tyranids or something like that. If 40k did go ahead with a TV show, I would be way, way more expectant of seeing something on a far smaller scale. I'm thinking like... A group of guardsmen cut off from the rest of the force trying to find their way back something chaos related maybe almost like a horror based thing you could do something almost judge dread style um in terms of an inquisitor hunting down a heretic or something like that there are a lot of very ambitious ideas for something like that there's a lot of stuff where it's like okay it would be awesome if this happened and a lot of it it would be awesome if it happened if we had like like the war for armageddon the tv series that would be amazing if we had you know, the Horus Heresy, the TV series. It would be the longest fucking TV series known to man, bar none, but it would also be amazing. The thing is, both of those, to me, as specific examples I've seen bandied around, would require a huge amount of investment. I would expect to see something smaller scale if that ever did go ahead. I'd expect to see something smaller scale, more manageable, and almost as a proof of concept, as a proof of popularity as well. I would love to see like the cinematic interpretation of you know the fall of Horus to chaos. But at the same time, that seems very unlikely to start with. And really, uh, there are lots of other tales you could tell in like a TV series from 40k. It doesn't all have to be like bombastic over the top, you know, hordes of power armored figures beating the shit out of each other with power swords. There are a lot more in the way of smaller, um, just as interesting, but not as big in scale stories that you could tell. I mean, I mean, if you think about like Cyphus Kane and Eisenhorn and you know there are there are things you could take from the material of 40k that would translate into a like a properly decent like six or ten episode TV series that wouldn't need to be absolutely rammed with screaming hordes of demons or a never-ending tide of greenskins or you know a full heretic Astartes invasion of a planet you could do some interesting stuff with it and I think if we did see a TV show, that is probably the guys it would take more than anything. Um, I bring that up just because that's been a major part of a lot of the discussion. I've seen a lot of people have been talking about that. And yeah, that's just where I feel that would go personally if we did see something like that. So yeah, as I said, I've linked the thing in the description down below. Um, give it a read. It's genuinely interesting. Uh, there's also a thread on... Um, Bolter and Chainsaw that I'll try and dig out that I uh, I had a look at yes was it yesterday whenever um, where someone did a good breakdown of like uh, Games Workshop's performance over the last ten years I think it was um, which is also worth a look so I'll, I'll try and find that and stick that in the description as well uh, yeah I think that probably just about does it thank you very much for watching um, feel free to click any of the things Patreon subscribe videos all of that. Click it if you like, don't click if you don't want to, and uh, I will see you for the next one. Toodaloo.